Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be covering Kanshu. He made his first appearance in Moon Knight, issue number one, that was released in August 1980. He also goes by the name Khans, and he's the ancient nocturnal Egyptian god of the moon, vengeance, and those traveling in the night and through time. Having variable height and weight, although he tends to be shown as being extremely tall and slim, while obviously having no eyes and no hair, having a humanoid form with a head that's actually a floating skull of a bird, be it a raven or albatross. Now, Kanshu had the title of being the greatest god of the great gods, being a powerful member of the Yanid, aka the Heliopolitan race of gods. And due to this lineage, he has moderate superhuman strength, being able to lift around 60 tons, as well as vast superhuman durability, being able to endure massive amounts of damage, although if he is injured, he has a moderate healing factor. In addition to functional immortality, Kanshu is also very quick, although this is a moot point due to the fact that he's a teleporter. And this is achieved through his manipulation and summoning of mystical energies, which also lends itself to his telepathy, being able to manipulate earthquakes, resurrect beings from the dead, and bestow superhuman powers to mortal beings, such as the Moon Knight. Kanshu has also been shown to be able to take and use the powers of those around him, storing these abilities in some of his onks. And if this wasn't enough, we've also recently learned that Kanshu has the ability to manipulate all lunar materials, which could be called lunakinesis. And interestingly enough, this includes the mystical metal Uru. And if you're wondering, yes, the same metal that Thor's hammer Mjolnir is made out of. And one more thing, Kanshu happens to be one of the more clever of all of his Anid brethren, being considered a super genius level intellect even among his fellow gods. Now, long ago in prehistory, Kanshu was said to be the son of Atum, aka Amun-Ra, and the air goddess named Amanet. He also had several very powerful siblings, with the most popular of them being Bast, the Wakandan panther god. Even the unimaginably powerful symbiote god known as Noel had his story about Kanshu, saying that he was actually a quote-unquote elder shadow dressed in local legend. Now, we'd see that around 1 million BC that Kanshu would be offended by not having been offered a spot on the Stone Age Avengers team, which would lead to his selection of a caveman to be his very first Moon Knight or Avatar to enforce his will on Earth and be a constant adjutant to the Avengers. This would also lead to the formation of the Cult of Kanshu, who were individuals that were completely sold out to the Moon God. We'd go on to see that over countless millennia, Kanshu and Ra would battle each other, being reborn over and over again in earthly avatars, with Kanshu establishing his power by winning every single time. Kanshu would enjoy relative bliss for many years, with him having organized followers that gave him honor many generations before the now River Valley began to give honor to other gods. But in 4000 BC, Kanshu would face a relatively big challenge, with his Moon Knight avatar who lived in Mesopotamia at the region having to battle against Kang and his army, the time-traveling menace having arrived to collect a final artifact for himself, which could have potentially affected the history and fate of the entire universe. But with the help of all the previous Moon Knight avatars of Kanshu, they would outnumber Kang and prevent this calamity. From there, we go on to see him pose as a human pharaoh in the ancient Egyptian city of Thebes, with him allying with the time-displaced West Coast Avengers, Doctor Strange, and Fantastic Four, all in a bid to get rid of the devious Ramatut. He'd even team up with Imhotep and Apocalypse to repel a brood invasion. Now, when we fast forward to 300 BC, we'd see that Kanshu would periodically still have conflicts with the time-traveling Kang, even interacting with a time-traveling Mark Spector, who's widely considered to be Kanshu's most popular avatar in this bid to defeat Kang. These time-traveling conflicts would lead all the way up to the modern day, where he would formally establish his relationship with Mark and bestow upon him his superhuman powers that he would develop under the moonlight. But from this point, Kanshu and Moon Knight's problems wouldn't just be limited to Kang. They would have plenty of run-ins with other superpowered beings, including the evil god Seth, and hellish beings like Mephisto, all while Kanshu was constantly dealing with Mark's insanity and deteriorating mental state. However, with all of that genius intellect, Kanshu also never lets go of a grudge. 
which would lead him into conflict with the modern day Avengers, which were the counterparts to the Stone Age Avengers. He even going as far as taking over Manhattan and renaming it New Thebe City, wanting it to be the capital of his new global empire. The only thing that stopped his new ambitions is his avatar Mark turning against him and luckily using the power of the Phoenix Force to defeat his old master. Now, for his powers and abilities and his influence on the Marvel Universe, for my 1 to 10 rating, I'll give Khonshu a rating of 9, which is an epic rating. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you next time. Be sure to like, subscribe, and join the new Sage.